What's going on, YouTube? Fine, it's your boy Tony Two Times, and we back with another episode of Hood Tales, man. Be sure to like, comment, share, subscribe if you're new to the fam. Today, we're gonna take it to Florida and talk about none other than the Booby Boys. Let's get right into it. The Booby Boys, one of Miami's most savage drug gangs, they have gone down in history as certified legends who were versatile in the power of street knowledge and hood justice. They allegedly got rid of anyone to establish their turf and to retaliate against rivals. Whacking was their game, and they took the enemies out recklessly. Executions and gangland style takedowns were their main thing. Miami police linked as many as 35 hits and 100 shootings to the Booby Boys, as they allegedly let loose an eight year surge of hits and mayhem in Miami. Headlines in the newspaper actually called it a decade of death, but as you all know, in the streets, it's just the way it is. The Booby Boys were respected, loved, and hated all at once. Their movement was strong, so with their power respect, wasn't too far behind. Some would say they stood on the meaning of my brother's keeper, all for one and ride or die. With their takeover of the Miami streets, they built the $80 million empire that smuggled over five tons of girl from Panama and the Bahamas. Their supply was feeding over 25 Florida cities and 12 states with narcotics. Their enterprise was concrete as they allegedly wreaked havoc, worn with other sessions in Miami-Dade area and leaving casualties in their rise. As a result, turf wars was out of control. Residents of the community were in fear and police were on edge with the blickies blasting every night and bodies dropping. But it was also a time that street legends were born. Kenneth Booby Williams was the name sake of the booby boys the alleged mastermind of the carroll city gang that police say left a trail of bodies on the streets in miami as they bought in millions of dollars worth of girl they turned the sunshine state into the miao for real at that time they became the distribution capital of the western part of the world it was all about bang bang and brick land now as with most hood legends rappers are the ones who usually put them out in the mainstream in this case of the booby boys it was rapper rick ross who rapped about them in his lyrics it was in his song white house on port of miami and the trailer intro too many though booby was a serious dealer that didn't play but to ross he was a friend and mentor he said that to him booby is to carol city cartel where larry hoover was to the gds and credits booby with founding the carol city cartel ross say it was booby who passed the rap baton to him before Booby was taken into custody by the FBI. He said Booby was the one who initially put him into the music game and said his music touches on Booby's lifestyle. Rick Ross continued to show his admiration for his homie Booby by featuring the Booby Boys on the MIAO DVD profiling Ross' top 10 urban gangsters and street legends from Miami. The DVD is a take of street life in Miami with Ross showing love to his homies and glorifying their deeds and definitely representing they hood. In the video, Ross had a shirt that says Booby Boys. He said it repped his homie Booby. Ross said and continued to imitate his former mentor, Street Demeanor. Ross portrayed himself not only as a dealer, but a gangster as well. But most can say Rick Ross is no Booby. Many would say he's just a rapper or entertainer who got his start as a CO maybe. That's how he first met Booby. The real dudes at the rhymes have a different outlook on it all. A man named Chico said Ross is the homie, but said he was not aware of the full effect behind his actions by glorifying the allegations against him and others. Associated with Booby and the Booby Boys, Booby had gotten life after being convicted of a federal firearm charge. The feds say he got 100 plus bodies. He was 27 years old. He was featured on America's Most Wanted in 1999. Rick Ross highlighted this in the DVD, among other things, in regards to Booby and the Booby Boys, dealing in Carroll City. Chico went on to say he knew Ross' intentions was good, but it was bad PR for their case. He said it was still guys fighting to overturn their convictions. Chico felt like it wasn't a good look, and he argued that the allegations against them were hyped up and straight up fabricated. Then a dude with mainstream exposure constantly tried to validate 
it with glory. He said hip hop rap music was powerful and reached beyond the rhyme of the hood. Plex, another dude bought in as an associate with the Booby Boys, agreed with Chico, but it was lightweight, a sucker move, Plex explained, by saying, because it was like validating what the police said by putting the Booby Boys t-shirt on. He continued by asking the question, who is the Booby Boys? Straight up, he said people didn't even call black Booby. We all called them black. Plex felt as though Ross was to represent his man's he should have put on a black t-shirt in a DVD. Plus chucked it up as Ross just being a rapper doing rap things. He hoped that Ross would move more wisely and stand up for his homie when the time came. But he said as far as for Carroll City Cartel, he had nothing to do with it. He was with a different movement while Ross was a little dude back in the 80s and 90s. He was basically doing him on a music tip. E4, another alleged associate, figured it was all entertainment and was just glad to see somewhere, somebody from where they was from make it out and wish Ross well. But Chico explained why he felt the rapper should have known where to draw the line between reality and entertainment. Chico said while he was on his way to the yard and USP Lee County, his case manager stopped him and asked if he saw the TV that morning. Chico thought the case got overturned or something. As he looked confused waiting for an answer, the case manager said your homeboy talking about Ross was representing for y'all and the Booby Boys. MTV had aired the hustling video early that morning. Chico felt like as a middle-aged white man who lived in Virginia saw it, so would everybody else in the appeals court judge and clerks who were in the process of making a decision on his appeal. Not to mention informants looking for information to report back with. Unfortunately, the appeal was denied shortly after the hustling video premiered. Chico said he wasn't saying that Ross comments directly caused it, but it was possible that it did without the intent to do so. Chico insists everyone cannot be glorified, especially detrimental events. Chico attempted to get in touch with Ross once he became aware of Ross' actions, but with no response. He sent another homie to relay the message to be more responsible for what he was saying and doing. But Ross told the associate that Booby had given him the green light. Chico didn't believe it, that it was completely true, and he knew Booby better. But, but Booby never hit him back, so he just assumed what Ross said was true. Chico felt like this was bigger than Ross and Booby. While some may have thought association was cool, he said association is what got him sentenced to life in the first place. Chico didn't blame Rick Ross, though. He said the beef was with Booby for not being one of those OGs that would have pulled him up quick, telling him about glorifying and name dropping. It was made hard for the real people involved that he was rapping about. Chico said they should have talked about the injustice involved instead of glorifying it in the lyrics. And felt as though that was a good way of representing the real people. Man, it's a crazy story, man. Salute to Miami, man. You feel me? All them boys got like life plus, man. So y'all know my saying, we got to succeed, not to fail. So we won't be just another hood tale. Love, fam, I'm out.